Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My, if we were to look at the sins that man commits, there are many. Some are major, some are minor. When minor sins are committed, the Prophet ﷺ tells us that when you do a deed that is a good deed after the minor sin, automatically the minor sin is wiped out even though there may not have been specific seeking of forgiveness for the minor sin. But when it comes to a major sin, then specific seeking of forgiveness is required. Unfortunately, we have the devil. He makes us commit the sin at the beginning. Then when we've turned to Allah, he makes us doubt the mercy of Allah on the other hand. So we need to strike a balance and we need to realize, yes, we will tackle the devil from the beginning and we will make sure that once we've come back to the right page in our relationship with Allah, we won't allow him to make us falter by thinking that we have not been forgiven. There is a crisis in the mind. There is a crisis in the situation sometimes. Allah comforts us in Surah Ala Imran by telling us who are the people who will earn paradise. We want to actually highlight the comfort that Allah gives those who have a crisis within them of whether or not Allah has forgiven them because they've committed adultery, they've fornicated, they've committed major sin, they've committed immorality, they've wronged themselves. Allah says, if you seek the forgiveness of Allah and you've changed your ways and habits, then paradise was actually created for people like you. Subhanallah. Did you hear that? Allah says, you may have committed adultery, you may have committed fornication, you may have so many other sins, intoxicants, drugs, gambling, whatever else, the list is endless of these major sins. And you know what Allah says? It's not the end. If you sought forgiveness and changed your ways, those are the two conditions you need. Seek forgiveness and change your ways. Then we want you to know that Paradise was actually created for people like you. La brings me to tears. Just to think of this, my brothers and sisters, listen to this beautiful verse, 135 of Surah Al-Imran. Those who have engaged in immorality, talking of adultery, fornication, immorality, whatever, nudity, pornography, whatever else it may have been, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who have engaged in immorality or they have wronged themselves by major sin in one way or another, if they remember Allah and seek forgiveness of their sins or from their sins and they know who is there to forgive the sins besides Allah, and they do not continue in their bad ways after knowing and after having sought the forgiveness, their lives change. So two things happen. After the sin, forgiveness was sought and they didn't go back to those bad ways. Their lives change. Complete. You are not going to be judged by your past, not in the eyes of Allah. Your past is exactly that. It's your past. Forget about it. Put it behind your back. You might even want to laugh about it sometimes because Umar ibn Khattab anhu, at times used to laugh about how they worshipped pieces of food that were carved or made into an idol. And they laughed at that later on. But they had sought forgiveness and their lives were changed. So it was okay to laugh at it, to say, we were so silly, weren't we? Look how Allah has blessed us and guided us. So my brothers and sisters, don't let your past haunt you because you'll never achieve comfort. It's a bigger crisis to let your past haunt you than the sins that you had actually committed, which were also a crisis at the time. But now that you've changed, forget about the past. It's gone. It's history. The beauty of Islam, you don't need to ever confess those sins to anyone, nobody. When you sought forgiveness from Allah, it was wiped out. Even the angels were made to forget it. So don't ever talk about it. The one who sought forgiveness from a sin is equivalent to he or she who never ever committed that sin. Look at the mercy of Allah there. So if someone says, did you commit a sin? I didn't because I'm equivalent to the one who didn't ever commit the sin and it's wiped out, it's gone. I don't wish to talk to you about it. You are not my God. You are not Allah. You are not the owner of the day of judgment. And for all purposes, you don't need to know what happened. You are perfectly fine by saying that. Absolutely. Allah says, you know what? 
أُولَٰئِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ Those people, their recompense will be the following. So which people? The people who did so much evil, but when they remembered Allah, they sought the forgiveness of Allah and they changed their ways. Two things happened in their lives. After the sin, they sought the forgiveness of Allah and they changed their ways. Those are the people. For them is مَغْفِرَةٌ مِّن رَبِّهِمْ True forgiveness from Allah. وَجَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا And paradise beneath which there will be rivers flowing, they shall dwell therein forever and ever. وَنِعْمَ أَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ And what a beautiful recompense for those who did good. You did good after you did bad. Allah says, we're not going to talk about your bad, it's all about the good. لا إله إلا الله Mercy of Allah. So my brothers and sisters, this is what Allah speaks about. When he talks about the forgiveness, those who have committed sin, he actually specifically mentions the major sins in this verse of Surah al Imran. Then if you look at the verse number 144, 145, 146 of Surah al Imran, there are two qualities that I want to talk about for a moment that bring about a lot of comfort as well. Shukr and sabr. Shukr means thankfulness, gratitude, and sabr means patience, forbearance, subhanAllah, restraint as well. Allah says that a believer is between, a believer is between gratitude and patience in his qualities. So when good comes in your direction, there will be days of goodness. Your duty is to thank Allah. So when goodness comes in your direction, don't become arrogant. Thank Allah. How do you thank Allah? By obeying his commands by fulfilling the instructions and staying away from prohibitions. That's the true show of gratitude to Allah. And Allah says, when hardship comes, when the tests come one after the other, don't become despondent. We will test you. We test you with a lot. But Allah says, your duty is sabr, which means patience, forbearance, and we will give you paradise. Paradise lies between sabr and shukr. Remember that. Between the two, thankfulness, gratitude on one hand, and patience on the other. Good comes, you're thankful. Bad comes according to you, because you are patient, it becomes good after it may have appeared to be bad. So my brothers and sisters, that is amazing. I want to end this episode with mention of Allah telling the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that had it not been for your qualities that we blessed you with, people would never have listened to what you have to say. They would have dispersed from around you. But because we blessed you with certain qualities, they listened to you, they took heed, they changed their lives, it helped them and you were successful by the help of Allah and chosen as a messenger, the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, etc, etc. All of that included, Allah says, and this is beautifully worded by Allah. Verse number 159 of Surah Al-Imran. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ It is because of the mercy of Allah that you were lenient towards them. Who's them? Those you spoke to, those around you, the believers, the disbelievers, whoever else. You were lenient towards them and that was because of the mercy of Allah. Now when you want to correct people, invite them to Islam, invite them to goodness. If you're not lenient, if you're harsh, you will lose them. Remember that. Allah says, one of the signs of the mercy of Allah is the development of leniency. Allah gives you the leniency. So, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ Because of the mercy of Allah, you were lenient towards them. If it was not the mercy of Allah, you would not be lenient. If you're not lenient, you would find yourself at a loss. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. This is amazing. One of the signs of the mercy of Allah is that you're lean. So those who call out to others, those who call others towards Allah, think about it. Think about this. Allah says, وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكِ If you were harsh, hard-hearted, they would have dispersed from around you. No listening to you, no taking heed. You wouldn't have been able to get across to them. This was the way Allah chose for you. You want to help people, you want to reach out to them, you want to let them listen to what you have to say, be lenient, show them that you care. There is no point in standing on a pulpit for you and I and to start shoving things down people's throats when we've never shown them we care for them. 
What have you done for them? Do you speak to them with respect? Do you respect them? Do you treat them well? When the Prophet ﷺ used to speak to one of the worst, whose name was Abu Jahl, he spoke to him respectfully, even though Abu Jahl was disrespectful. When the Prophet ﷺ spoke to Al-Akhnas ibn Shuraik and the others, Umayyah ibn Khalaf and a few others, he always spoke with a lot of respect. So remember, Allah says to the Prophet ﷺ, فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ Forgive them. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ And seek forgiveness for them. وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ And the believers from among them, seek their opinions in certain matters of importance. See what they have to say. Seek their opinions. And once you lay your trust on Allah, once you've made a decision, lay your trust on Allah. And don't worry. Allah loves those who lay their trust on Him. It is important for us to take heed, my brothers and sisters. Forgive people and seek forgiveness for them. Those are two different things. One is I forgive you. And two is I ask Allah to forgive you as well. May Allah forgive all of us.